Hello, and welcome to the Digital Workspace Works podcast. I'm Ryan Purvis, your host, supported by our producer Heather Bicknell. In this series, you'll hear stories and opinions from experts in the field, stories from the front lines, the problems they face and how they solve them, the areas they're focused on from technology, people and processes, to the approaches they took that will help you to get to the scripts for the digital workspace inner workings. Well, I think you had, it's been a bit, but I think you had a story uh, that I was supposed to remind you to share about your iPad. Oh yeah. Your MacBook. So so this, this is, this is one of my favorite stories that I tell people that when they ask me, you know, are you, are you going to get another windows device? And I kind of literally say hell no. So I am, and it comes up quite a lot, you know, because people are talking about windows 11 and how, how poor an experience it actually is, um, you know, things missing on the uh, on the screen, and and uh, it's really just rounded corners and, and a centralized start menu. Otherwise, it's just Windows Ten. You know, it's it's really it's still I'm still unclear why why it's being pushed out. To be quite honest, I, I don't see the value in that. But anyway, so, so the story is, I was in a meeting, uh, one of my very few face to face meetings. And we were trying to present, the guy who was running me was trying to present something on the screen, on the projector screen. And there was only three or four of us in the room. Um, and he couldn't get his device, which was, a, which was a Surface, to connect and send the stuff on the screen. So I had my, my Mac on, the, on the, the desk and I, it wasn't open yet. So while he was fiddling around, I basically opened up my Mac. I turned on my, opened up my iPad, put them next to each other, and I turned on, on the side screen. And then for the two guys that were sitting across the table, I just turned my iPad around. And for me and the guy that was trying to think, I said, just sit here and we'll just do it this way. And we were able to have a meeting sitting across from each other with the two with the screens being shared and, and have the meeting. And I thought that was the most awesome experience because it, it literally took me three seconds to get um, Sidecar up and running and, and sharing the screen. And we were able to have a meeting. There was no faffing around and whatever. To the point now that whenever I'm sitting downstairs in my off, uh, when I'm in my office, I have my iPad with me, and that's my second screen. And it's such a seamless experience um, that you actually don't even. Sometimes you forget that this is actually an iPad next to you. You just think it's part of your, your desktop. Um, so yeah, it's it's really sold me on. And this is probably why I have to get a bigger iPad. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> but. But they've got, you know, they've really got it right. Um, and if I think about all the times that I've struggled with, with, with second screens and, and projectors and all the rest of it, for simple meetings, this, this is awesome. That was my first question is what, what screen size do you have on the, on the iPad? Because I'm sure that, so, yeah. So I've, so I've got the 11 inch, um, which, which I will say is, is a really, really nice size. And, and when I bought it and I agonized over the 12.9 versus the 11, um, I always felt that the 11.9 as a, a portable device was too big. Um, and when I say portable device, I mean, can I throw this in my gym bag like I do sometimes, go to gym, and if, I need to, if I'm waiting for something, I can do something quickly, this is the right size. If I'm on a train, if I'm on a plane, it's the right size. So it's a really good size. And if I'm, if I'm sitting in bed reading something, it's not too big. I can hold it with one hand, I can read stuff. So I'm reading Apple News, like I've just signed up Apple News, that's, a, that's actually a really good service and it works really well on the iPad, like, you know, from a, from a feel and touch, et cetera. But if you're going to start using it as a, and, and a lot, some people do this as the main computer, as maybe on your desk all the time, then going for the 12.9 or even the this, this, this suggestions of an even bigger one coming in, um, then that makes sense. It, you know, then it's, a, then it's a work process and especially what they've done now with, with iOS 15, um, and the multitasking, because that's now finally good. Um, and, and it's good because, you know, in, in, in previous, previous OS versions, it was very difficult to do split screens and to have the third screen, you know, that sort of, I don't know if you've ever tried this, where you can have two. So, so on, on, um, on, on in the old version, if you wanted to have a split screen, you could have your one application open and then you, you get off the dock the second app that you want to put next to it. But it only works for some apps. Mm-hmm. What they've done, what they've changed in iOS 15 
is instead of trying to manipulate with your finger, there's a little, there's little three dots at the top of the screen. And, you pre- and you, whichever dot you pick on, it, it'll, it'll either be to move the app to the left-hand side so you can select the second app, or it's to put the app that you currently got on the on like sort of little trim bar. So it's almost like a floating window. So you can have, in theory, three windows open at the same time. So if you picture, what's a typical scenario? A typical scenario for me would be having a Word document open and then the split screen having a, having a PowerPoint slide open where I'm now converting a Word document to a PowerPoint slide or, or vice versa. And then the third window might be my notes, my, my, my sort of things that I've taken down as notes in the sales meeting or, or operations meeting or something. So now you can, and you can move that floating window around as you, you know, if you're reading something in the Word document, you can cover up the PowerPoint. And if you're working in the PowerPoint, you can move the notes over the Word document. Um, so it gives you quite a nice and flexibility. So in that, in that scenario, having a bigger screen would make all the difference. Because on the 11 inch, even though I have a pretty good spacing, it just feels a little bit cramped. Um, mm. But that is a big device to carry around. So I would, I would only see myself using that if, um, if I gave up on a laptop and I wanted a bigger device in this case. Um, but in, in, you know, as I say, the 11 inch is, is a really nice size. And I've got the, um, the magic keyboard. So if you could see my uh, yep. camera. So that, that's, that's, also, bit, yeah. that, that's also really good. So this, this, this experience as a, a fold up device, and if we go away on the weekends, I usually only take my iPad with me because I can send the email, I can do whatever I need to do. Unless I want to code something, then I bring the, bring the Mac with me, the, the laptop. Um, and then I've got the other cover, which, which is without the keyboard if I just want to read. And then that takes off about a kilo because the keyboard's yeah. quite heavy. It, it feels heavy. Um, yeah, so I don't know if that answers your question. A bit long-winded, but... Uh, no, it does. Uh, I mean, yeah, sounds like it's a good... A good experience. Um, well, you know, when you when you look at the price of the thing, maybe this is something if anyone's even thinking about this. So I, I, I did not. In fact, I was I was sitting with someone on Tuesday, Monday, who has an old iPad Pro, and we were just and we were discussing, you know, the old ones versus the new ones. And when I say old, I'm talking about pre 2018. So pre 2018, the pencil was not magnetized on the top of the device. It was the one that you had to plug into the USB, uh, the Thunderbolt port to charge. And he asked me, sort of, you know, did you, you know, was that a factor in your purchasing? I said, yeah, that was exactly, that was the one reason why I never put the money down for the original Pro. Because I didn't want a pencil where I could break the, the Thunderbolt connector when it was plugged into the bottom. Because I could just see myself doing that. Um, so this, this pencil that comes with it now, it charges on the top. Is hugely useful. Um, and what they've added again with iOS 15 is if you've got your iPad open, and let's say I'm on the call with you now, and I just swipe from the bottom right hand corner, and I say, Oh, I need to take notes quickly, it pops up notes. Um, now, I, I, I've used various solutions, I use drafts, I use notes itself, et cetera. But that little flick is so useful because it's so many times I'm in a meeting and someone's talking about something, and usually it's a meeting where you think you're not going to have to take notes. But now all of a sudden they say, oh yeah, I want to talk about this and this and this. And like, oh, I need notes. Now you flick it out there. Now you could write if you want to, but you can also type quite quickly. And it actually saves that in a specific place in notes for you. So you've got like a quick note section and then you've got your normal notes. And that's probably saved just on its own, you know, an hour a week. Um, and, and the reason why I say saved, because often what happens is I'm, if I have to take notes and I've got nothing handy, I'm, I'm making notes on a piece of paper. That piece of paper now has to be reviewed again I have to remember what I was discussing, who I was discussing it with, and I have to now capture it as, as tasks or whatever. So, you know, they've, they've really got this as, as a productivity tool. Um, it's really tops. But you're saying with, um, with the cost component? Oh, sorry, yeah. I mean, yeah. That's, that, that's the ADHD. You know, get, get on one tangent and then you forget where you're coming from. So, so, so what I was saying is that if, when you look at the cost of it, I think I paid... 2018, so I've probably paid about 1,200 pounds. And that included, uh, I think the pencil you have to pay for, and I think that included Apple Care. Um, so maybe, maybe it was 1,500 with Apple, with Apple Care. That probably sounds about right. Now, if you compare that to a top of the range, well, not even top of the range, a decent laptop, 
you'd be buying a surface or, or a, a surface book or something like that. Um, so you are, so, so you are in the premium sort of laptop range. I mean, obviously that laptop is more expensive in the sort of 2000, two and a half thousand pound range, but, but it's chunky is what I'm getting across. But if I compare, you know, some of the laptops that I've bought for over time for work, you know, I've spent the same amount of money. Those things have degraded in performance over the last two years. Whereas this hasn't, and you know, this thing still operates like as quick as it was. It feels, still feels as quick as it was. Um, it handles all the stuff that I need to do without any sort of sluggishness. But I mean, it, it, you know, it, it's almost unheard of sometimes when you think about this, that the tablet still does what it's supposed to do. And if I, and I use it, you know, probably 60% of the day, 50% of the day. Yeah. So now if you take, if you take 1500 pounds, and you divide that up by 700 odd days, um, you're almost paying a pound a day for the device. Its value on return on that is huge. Um, if I compare that to a Windows device that I bought at the same time, the, the value would, would degrade over time definitely because the performance is getting worse and worse and worse. The experience on Windows is, is always suboptimal, um, or mostly it's a little ways. Um, so, so there's no uptick. Now, now, the, the average Mac laptop, I mean, bear in mind, this is my first one that I've actually owned. Well, so I don't really have my own experience with this. But people that I know that have, that have run Apple for years have said that they get you know, a good five, six, seven years out of their, their devices. So it, it definitely feels like even though it's a pricey purchase, your value for, for money is there. Um, and, the, and the other best part of this is that when, you, when you're done with the device, I don't think people make use of this enough, you trade it in. Whereas when you're done with a Windows device, you can't trade it in because most people won't take it. But Apple was quite happy to take you know, my, old, my wife's old Mac in exchange for us, us taking our new ones. And yes, it took a couple grand off the price. Um, but the important thing was I didn't have to worry about what I was going to do with this other device that I didn't really want to keep because it, it was seven years old, um, not almost, it was six years old. Uh, so I think in that sense, it's a good all rounder purchase staying mm -hmm. in, in the Apple ecosystem. Yeah. I mean, since it's all, it's all locked in, they can take their hardware back and recycle parts of it. And they're definitely, as we've talked about before downs, you know, there's downsides to lock in, but, um, I think, uh, yeah, iPads, I have an older iPad. It's tracking along fine. And they're just very versatile devices. I use it for, you know, a more, way more diverse range of things than a laptop. Well, that's, that's it. I mean, I, you know, it's, it's funny. I don't even watch Netflix on TV anymore. Um, I only watch them on my iPad. And that's because on, on the Netflix app, you can run whatever you're watching at one and a half times the speed. Uh -huh. um, which... <laughs> I mean, it sounds silly, but if I, like I'm watching a series at the moment, it's it's just nice to watch it at a higher speed because it's not 45 minutes and it's it's half an hour, um, and it just you don't feel like you, you know, there's, there's some shows that are just slow. You can speed through those things, um, but also you can you know get through content quicker because there's always something that that, that I want to watch, and uh, I really enjoy the one and a half speed. It's actually weird to watch it on slow speed. I feel, I, I, I know I, I, I speed up some things as well, mostly, um, YouTube videos. I haven't quite gotten around mm. to just like a normal, I don't know. Like, I feel like a produced show. Um, I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I feel like I would notice it more, but I'm sure you get used to it over time. Well, it, yeah. So, I mean, you know, I listen to a lot of podcasts. So, so I listen, you know, I use an app called Overcast to listen, which, which most people use. Um, and that should be, that should go up to three and a half speed. Um, and he's also got a, um, technology, which he calls smart voice, I think, where he skips over the, the gaps. So it's even quicker. You know, sometimes you get to 3.7, 3.8, depending on the, on the show. And the other day, for some reason, I was, I was listening to, um, the show at one speed, one X speed, and the voices are completely different. And I couldn't, I, I couldn't tell who the, like, I know, I, I knew the speaker, but I couldn't tell who the speaker was. And the minute I sped it up again, I was like, oh yeah, that's who it is. Okay. And I know what episode it is. Um, it's just funny how you, you get so used to something. And I think that's, you know, one of these digital things that, that, um, 
will become an important thing is, is you know, to, to process information quickly um, in order to consume it um, with, with, the, with the view that, it, that you can put more volume through, obviously. But also, you know, when it comes to like education, for example, you know, lectures, lectures being at 2x speed instead of 1x. So someone can record it at 1x, but you can go and study it at 2x or 3x. Yeah. And, and, and what I do, like, like like on YouTube is a good example. So I'll watch something on 2x speed. But if there's something that I need to now go back and, and like, like look at, then I'll go back and watch it at 1x speed. But I've already got the gist of the whole episode. So when I go back and now looking for that specific how uh, to on, I was doing something on, on integration the other day. So how do you do integration? Okay, there we go. Now, now I have to go through that slowly, step by step. But I've got the whole concept in my head. Um, which means my understanding is a bit better. Yeah. I mean, there's certainly um, utility to it and it's a nice option to be able to, to do that. Um, I do need to run. Thanks, Heather. We'll, uh, we'll catch up next week. Thank you for listening to today's episode. Heather Bicknell is our producer and editor. Thank you, Heather, for your hard work on this episode. Please subscribe to the series and rate us on iTunes or the Google Play Store. Follow us on Twitter at the DWW Podcast. The show notes and transcripts will be available on the website, www.digitalworkspace.works. Please also visit our website, www.digitalworkspace.works, and subscribe to our newsletter. And lastly, if you found this episode useful, please share with your friends or colleagues.